Hello to everybody. Um, uh, today I will tell you something about buildings archaeology and what we can learn from it. Sometimes in archaeology we are confronted with still existing buildings and so we do archaeology before it becomes archaeology. So we will have a look at a case study of a potter's workshop and dwelling from around 1900s. Let's move to Lower Austria into the small town Pulkau. There we have investigated two buildings which have been existing uh, since the 16th or 17th, respectively 19th centuries. The older one is already mapped on the Franciscan cadaster, which originates from the early 19th century. It's indicated by the blue circle. The building represents the workshop and the dwelling of a Pottis family, which lived and worked here between 1875 and 1935. In this case study, we analyzed artifacts, written and image sources, and documented the buildings by three-point measurement, laser scanning, and a photographic survey combined with image-based modeling. Each of these methods has its advantages and disadvantages, but the combination of them gives us the possibility to create a maximum of information. By three-point measurement, we recorded data using a laser distance meter and created ground plans using the AutoCAD software. For the photographic survey, we took 1,649 um, digital images and processed them by image-based modeling using the software Agisoft Metashape. The small rectangles you can see on the screen represent the correct position of the single pictures taken after processing them. From the data, we can create a 3D model, which we can provide with a photorealistic texture. On the screen, you can see the workshop building as a 3D model with different resolutions. We see the front of the building facing the yard. We can also enter the model virtually and have a look inside. So um, first, we will uh, have a look uh, in the yard. Um, we see the, the Potter, um, Potter's workshop building. Um, the, the left door leads to the ground floor um, into the, the workshop. Um, the right one leads to the attic. Um, and on the attic, um, we can see uh, a lot of um, plaster molds, uh, which were used to create <coughs> I'm oh, sorry, uh, stuff tiles and um, vases. And keep an eye on the gable wall on the left, which uh, leans outside. Oh. On the ground floor, uh, on the left part, we are inside the kiln. And um, now we um, move to the room where the pottery was uh, shaped on the potter's wheel and glazes were prepared. Um, the brute uh, clay objects were dried in this room before they were fired in the kiln. And when we leave this room, um, we see on the left uh, the charging opening of the kiln. And in the next room, where the kiln is uh, located, um, yes, that's uh, the stairs up to the attic. Um, here the kiln uh, is located and um, on the right you see the opening from which the kiln was fired. And um, here we have a glaze uh, mill um, with which the glazes were prepared. We um, again will have a short look in the yard and see also a part of the residential building. So moreover, um, we documented both buildings uh, with a laser scanner. From 229 scanning positions, uh, we, we recorded um, 4.9 billion points. The point cloud we recorded within um, approximately six hours. For further processing of the data, um, allows to create horizontal and vertical cross sections which we need for interpretation. While data recording on-site needed only a few hours, further data processing and creating the required cross-sections needed several days. As an example, you can see a horizontal cross-section of the residential building's ground floor. Um, you remember while watching the 3D model of the workshop building, I told you to keep an eye on the upper part of the gable wall. Well, during a storm, the inclined gable wall collapsed. 
Recorded data reveals that already at a former moment, we do not know exactly a similar damage happened and was repaired afterwards. So now um, we will have a closer look to the residential building. We are entering it through the door, which was the entrance to the former shop, as we can see on a photograph taken in the early 1900s. To climb the attic, we arrive in a room, which is some kind of a random time capsule. Up on the wall was sprayed an emblem consisting of a garland, two swords, and a steel helmet. On its right, we can identify the date 1933. Below is written in German, Three Years Federation Leader Starenberg. It reflects to Ernst Rüdiger Starenberg, leader of the Heimwehr and the proponent of the Austrofascism. Since the emblem reflects to an anniversary, we assume that the Pottes family supported the Austrofascism. On the attic below straw, the post for thermal insulation reasons decades ago, we found posters on which the Nazi party, NSDAP, invites to a lecture about the stew Sunday. The idea was to surrender the Sunday roast instead of a simple dish and donate the money saved. The posters indicate that in 1938, the building's inhabitants supported also the new rulers. We move to the cellar. Um, the walls of the cellar rooms are constructed of stone, while the vault is constructed of bricks. This construction type dates into the 16th and 17th centuries. One of the cellar rooms has a window that originally could have been a small door. We suppose that this room was used for clay storage. Now we move back into the workshop to have a closer look at the pottery kiln, which was constructed of bricks. It has a rectangular outline and the fire room has a volume of about 5.5 cubic meters. As you can see, there is still some pottery left in the firing room from the last firing. Um, this pottery you can also see in this uh, 3 model, 3D model, which was uh, created from the lasing scanner data. Inside the workshop building was left some equipment as the plaster molds on the attic you have seen in the animated 3D model before, a potter's wheel, glaze mills and a mortar. And last but not least, there was a selection of glaze sieves and glaze ladles left. Well, buildings archaeology not only deals with the building itself, we examine also written sources and image sources. Maybe you remember the Franciscan cadaster mentioned. We also have a painting from 1759 on which we can see our building. That and the building itself make clear that there were different construction phases we can distinguish. So now, who was working and living at this property? To answer this question, we analyzed the registers of birth, death and marriage in the Pulkow Parish and a family photo album. The first potter migrated from Moravia to Lower Austria and married a local woman. They produced vessels for household use and stuff tiles. The workshop was closed in 1935 when the second potter died in a period of enormous political, economic and lifestyle changes. Vessels of earthenware, which were the standard household equipment for millennials, were replaced by animal vessels. So this case study shows us that we can do archaeology also before it becomes archaeology. Thank you for your attention.